All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a, another episode of the Pigeonhole Motorcycle Podcast. Um, I'm really excited today because we have Colt Wrangler on the line. Colt, how you doing today, my friend? Good, sir. How are you? You know, I'm living the dream. I don't know whose dream, but I'm living it. There you go. <laughs> That's a so, dream for everything. It, it is. It is. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out. I know you were, were you working on a bike today. Yes, if, if you could call it that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or turning into a bike. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm working on it. Some days there's a lot of physical work, and other days there's like, uh, it seems like I spend a whole day online, like researching or looking for specific parts. And hey, every know. day is a learning experience too. Yeah, today was so, the internet. The good. Well, I'm going to start this off a little differently than we have because we got to keep our keep our listeners on our toes here. So, okay. folks, we're gonna we're gonna do a uh, 20 questions, two minutes. We're going to jump right into Colt and find out. uh, So here's the only rules, buddy. You can't pass. You have to have an answer. And we only get two minutes to do it. Okay. Sound fun? All right. So let's let's learn about Colt. I'm starting the timer. All right. Are you a right-hander or a left-hander? Right-hand. Boxers or briefs? Boxers. Favorite musical artist? Oh, Lord. I don't really have one. One of them. Okay. Um, can you think? Um, ooh, that um, probably one of my all-time favorites is is Hank Williams, the first. Oh, yeah. Love it. Um, if you worked at a town carnival, what job would you have? Um, I have worked at a town carnival. Um, <laughs> yes. And I uh, uh helped with the pony rides. Nice. Uh, what's the fastest you've ever gone on a motorcycle? Speedometer said 186, but I don't know if that was true. Damn. Um, it was on the street, uh, well, on the road, but we got long stretches out here. So it, it was probably more like 150 or 160, but it, All right. it was fast. What's your favorite Instagram site to visit? Oh. Um, drunk people doing things. Nice. Um, what's the last thing you ordered online? A uh, some dye, spray dye. Nice. Shark Week, thumbs up or thumbs down? Never seen it. Uh, what's your favorite beer? Um, beer. Uh, favorite cocktail? Uh, Lone Star Light. Lone Star, Lone Star Light. Lone Star Light. Yeah. Are you a charcoal or propane guy? Um, I propane. Uh, what was your first car? My first, uh, a 1997 Ford F-250, power stroke. <laughs> nice. Um, what, uh, what's your biggest pet peeve? Mm. Uh, I, I don't like when uh, you go to introduce yourself to someone and you tell them your name and, and they just shake your hand and say, nice to meet you, and they don't say their name back. I'm with you. Are you a hunter or a gatherer? A uh, hunter. If you had to go to the future or to the past, which would you do? I would go to the past. Nice. More in, more insight. And my favorite question, what makes you sweaty? Um, interviews. <laughs> All right. Well, you passed. You passed. All right. I had a couple in there, a little off off color ones for today, but we're gonna we might save uh, those in a different format of question for you later. Was that two minutes? Was that within two minutes? Yeah, I think we made it. I think we made it. It was okay. right in there. My fake timer over here I had. Oh, uh, like put... okay, yeah. Isn't it felt it funny like how... maybe three. <laughs> yeah, it's a, in the grand scope of things, two minutes is an eternity. Yes, sir. Um, so tell me, about where you, tell me about where you grew up. I know you're a Texas boy. Uh, so I grew up in a small town, uh, Mason, Texas, which is uh, right in the heart of Texas, almost in the geographical center, so... Small Pretty state close. you live in. Yeah, yeah, real small. <laughs> so, so how far is that from like San Antonio? Uh, it's about two. I think at two hours, um, two to two and a half, uh, north. I guess it's northwest of San Antonio. So it's a small town. Yes, sir. About two thousand people. Wow. Um, there is smaller. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, being in the dead center of Texas in a two thousand person town. So, yeah. what did you guys do there for fun? Uh, 
oh man shoot stuff you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> shoot stuff when i when i got a motorcycle i mean that that was cool you know but then all the cops started knowing who i was you know once i did that right. how like, old were you then i think i was 17 okay yeah about 17 so 17 first my... bike yes sir <laughs> nice so did your friends yeah. have bikes too or is it just you no it was just just me yeah wow yeah. that which, yeah, which kind of it sucked a little bit but the yeah. cops can narrow in just on you then you don't have oh yeah diversions for you yes definitely so when did your okay so building motorcycles how did you get into building your own well i couldn't afford really for somebody else to mess with mine you know um so i just started tinkering them with them on my own um and i'm, I'm the type of person that like i want to make everything unique mm -hmm. i don't want to have the same thing everyone else has and so therefore i would always have to alter whatever i had which you know in this case is motorcycles but anything else in my life it was always that way i always wanted to kind of put my stamp on it so having a bike um you know of course i wanted to alter it uh and i basically just had to dive into it um so i started working jobs in the automotive industry just anything that that had wheels you know i i, I would just try to get a job that was close to it like if i could you know change tires that was my first job was changing tires and nice. um you know changing oil and different stuff like that working at like tire and lube places uh and then I ended up working at a, at a truck shop that did uh, like all suspension work, like lift kits and all that kind of stuff. And then you just kind of learn from people and somebody shows you how to weld on brake. And then, at, you know, you stay late afterwards and you start screwing with this and screwing with that. And, you know, uh, 10 years later, I'm here. So, right. So what, what yeah. was the, what was the first bike that got noticed for you? It was a 2000, I think it was 2000. Yeah, Harley Sportster, uh, 1200. I, I had bought, um, bought it for like two grand. It was, somebody had done like a real like nasty like bobber job out of it. Um, and uh, I remember <laughs> I remember going and I, I don't know, you know, everything's far away here. It's, it's so I, I find it on Craigslist. I have to drive like a couple hours after work to go look at it. And by that time it's, dark uh the moon wasn't out i was outside of town there's no street lights or anything so i go to test ride this bike and uh, i get on it i start going down the road and the headlight shuts off it's the middle of the night there's no street lights and i can't see and if you ever have like your lights go out uh and then a car's coming at you it's just blinding and 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 you don't know where you're at on the road you know it's kind of sketchy so anyway That's I, scary <laughs> I got I got it back, no accidents, and I was like, I'll take it. <laughs> and uh, nice, <laughs> yeah. So I started messing with it, and um, and and it got noticed. Uh, Were you posting those pictures on Instagram? Yeah, Facebook? I started. Mm -hmm, I, I I started an Instagram uh, for the bike stuff. Uh, you know, I, I I was still working at other places, and it was just kind of. Like eh, maybe I can, you know, do something with the bike thing. So I, I was working at a truck shop, and then I was working on my bike there on the side, and kind of, you know, using their welders or whatever they had around. And um, yeah, that was like real budget. Um, and uh, anyway, it 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 got out there a little bit. I, you know, I had ridden it to, I had ridden it to the handbuilt show one of the like like the third year they had the handbill show or something like that i had right. ridden it out there and i knew some some people through instagram and i got invited to this after party and uh and then th there was a uh, a guy there that was doing some writing for iron and air magazine well who's that started talking to me it was um i told chris you earlier I blank, I blank on names no, no that's it wasn't chris uh it wasn't adam it, it uh 
Why am I free? I feel I feel terrible that I'm blanking no, that's on a... his name. He has Standard Motorcycle Company. Uh, I know exactly who you're talking about, and I'm yeah. terrible with names as well. Which I, I know. Which I, I hope he... which I need to get better at. But I hope he doesn't text me and be like, "Dude, you forgot my name. What the hell?" Yeah, I'm Man. I'm sure he won't he won't be taking it personally. Uh, it it's uh. You know what? Hold on. Let's let's find it, and I'll just edit through here. Uh, it's uh, Jason Paul Michaels. Jason Paul Michaels. So you met him Jason at the Paul after Michael, party. Yeah, yeah, he was there, and and he, uh, uh, him and uh, his ex-wife now, but at the, at the time it was his wife, uh, Letitia, I think. Le anyway, Jason Paul Michael. Uh, he was there. It was the first time I met him. He was really cool. He came up to me and talked to me, and uh, and then later on in the night. I, I had my bike in the back of my van and some of my other friends were there were like, dude, pull that thing out. It's cool. So I pulled it out and, uh, he came and saw it and ended up crashing there that night in the van. And, uh, <laughs> one of the, one of the photographers that was there took photos of it that morning. I and thought then, they were going to say they took pictures of you sleeping next to your bike or something. Yeah. No, that'd be cool. <laughs> that uh, would have been great. <laughs> yeah. So they but took anyway, pictures he, right there. Yeah, they took pictures right there, and he didn't say anything about like writing an article or, or being an iron and air or anything like that. And then he uh, he got a hold of me like a month later, and he's like, "Hey, you know, we're gonna feature you in this," and that was really cool, man. That was awesome for me, and and that really helped a lot. It, that was it really... definitely like a time when you could say, "What helped launch you?" That that was it. And all from going to a to a party, which is even yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, which was great. You know, I mean, I had nothing. Like, I hadn't done any sort of commissioned work at all. You know, still didn't really know much about bikes. I mean, I don't know much about bikes now, but I definitely knew a lot less then. And um, knew, you know, wasn't much of a fabricator. Really wasn't much of anything. I was just trying to put something together with the money I had and make it look cool. Right. So the next year, did you get invited to Handbill? Or is it a year or so after? Mm, no, not the next year. I think it, it – well, I can't remember. I can't remember how it went. I, I, I submit, submitted something at some point. Right. Yeah, so I saw – I was just looking through stuff this afternoon, and I saw the really, really cool interview with you and Jesse Combs about the bike that you had at yeah. Handbuilt. Was that your first yeah. year there? No, that wasn't. Um, I think that was my – second or third nice yeah well, it, so. was, it was really interesting to hear you guys talking and, and jesse got rest her god rest her soul that um what a what a cool interview man and how oh, much you liked your work and just a great human being well and i knew her you know years before seeing her on like uh off-road shows and stuff like that and of course like working in the truck scene and the jeep scene you know all that uh you know, everybody knew who she was and you'd see her on promotional stuff and see her on TV. So it was super cool because they, they had several different people interviewing different builders mm -hmm. and uh, it was kind of, you know, whoever they paired you up with and they paired me up with her and I was like, yes, this is great. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I don't want Stuhlberg interviewing me. I, <laughs> yeah, I want I'll Jesse. Talk to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love you, Alan. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I love you, Alan. But anyway, I want to talk to her. She looks better. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, so that was really cool, and uh, um, you know, even more so special now that I got to talk to her, being that right. that she's gone, you know, right, and and actually get to meet her and see how great of a person she was. Yeah, and such a such a big part of the motorcycle community and culture, and and just fantastic person. Yeah, she's just like a, a, a rowdy girl, you know. She's like it's like she she. Uh, just goes after stuff. wasn't scared. My mom was kind of that way. I mean, is that way? Like, <laughs> she still you know, is that way. <laughs> she still is that way. Like she just, you know, caution of the wind. Like I'm gonna go do what I what I love to do. So that's hey, always that's a, a cool good, characteristic. Good lesson to teach your children. That's for sure. Yes, sir. Yeah, just to keep them out there. So when you when you start building and, and you're on Instagram and and doing your stuff, did you have some people that you admired that? you know gave you some more inspiration to to move forward in your bike building definitely um 
and I think this this may have happened before uh, Jason had written that article, but it was it was the guys at uh, Cafe Racers of Instagram. They Great they dudes. were yes, they were rolling, and uh, they they did this tour um, on these CB seven fifties, and they were riding around all over the U.S. and they hit me up because they were coming from Austin down to San Antonio and they were staying the night in San Antonio. And so I was like really stoked to meet up with them and I met up with them and uh, they ended up having some issues with their bikes that they needed to fix. And I had keys to the shop that I was working at. So it was kind of cool. We spent the evening just like working on their stuff, getting them ready for the next day. And uh, they've always been super cool about uh you know just posting some of my stuff on their site and really helping me gain more followers and more notoriety and you know that it that takes a lot um i mean that that helps a lot when you're starting out because especially when you haven't done anything commissioned yet like Mm -hmm. who's going to be crazy enough to just drop off a bike and a you know handful of cash to you and just say all right have at it you know <laughs> do what you and that's do basi- man. <laughs> that's basically what i was asking people to do you know <laughs> right we'll get paid so, for doing something you love yeah and, and have your creative freedom yeah it really helps if you have something online or in a magazine or anything like that yeah and it's it's cool because i know those guys are very selective on on what they put out because they have a reputation and they're huge influencers influencers um in mm-hmm. this whole culture that if you get something on there you know it, it really is something yeah so um so cafe racers of instagram that's that's cool because they're they have a lot of really cool stuff to see and and follow on there yeah and they're so cool about i mean they're just great people but on top of that uh you know they're they're really man when i run into them it's always like dude how's it going and we just they're always asking questions and asking about what you're doing and um they're just really great people and the fun people yes i've got to see them everywhere from hand built to a dgr and in, in, uh, yeah. new york and all over the place so they're a lot of fun especially not being a motorcycle guy like myself actually meeting you know all these real people with just fun stuff and they just happen to build really yep. cool shit and they're out there just doing what they love mm-hmm. all right so riding motorcycles is crazy but what i think is even crazier about you my friend uh let's talk a little bit about bull riding oh lord man <laughs> gets my adrenaline going just thinking about it <laughs> how in the world do you get into something like that believe it or not uh both my parents did it professionally so uh my my dad uh was a bull rider uh in the prca and my mother was a bull rider and bareback rider in the uh, pwra which i think is now the wpra but in the 80s it was the pwra and uh yeah so it's really it's i mean you know if i wanted the bull riding career i really grew up in the perfect family for that this is true. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I grew up on the rodeo circuit, and um, you know, parents stopped in Galveston, and you know, had me, and we hit the road again, and <laughs> went to the next one, you know. That's and so great. I pretty much grew up in a you know RV or a horse trailer, or, you know, something. And uh, yeah, so. I started I started riding uh, you know like mutton busting and stuff like that and and usually at all those PRCA rodeos they have something like that um, just you know people really like that it's entertaining so I started right. doing that when I was little and then I joined uh, there's a bunch of associations for it just like there is in racing and I joined an association when I was like eight or nine I started riding calves and then I started riding. Uh, steers and junior bulls uh and then by the time you're in high school you're riding full full full-size bulls and then i rode a little bit after high school and i rode a little bit of saddle bronc horses too wow so you gotta have some serious balls to do that man yeah well i don't know just gotta be a little bit stupid you know (laughs) (laughs) Uh, like like bikes are just as, as as gnarly the thing the thing about 
bull riding is you're right you're getting on something that has a mind of its own so you know you can somewhat you can't control you know when you're riding motorcycles of course you can't control the people out on the road or on the track and you know uh the road is definitely a very very dangerous place but um you know you can kind of control your speed and and how hard you go you know when you're riding bulls it's like what happens happens after they open the gate you know and it could be good it could be bad so you know that's that's the thing it's it's crazy so getting on a motorcycle probably didn't seem that dangerous at first after riding a full-fledged bull <laughs> yeah well i don't know i it's funny because my, my dad got a harley um when i was probably like 11 or 12 something like that and i used to ride on the back with him and i was scared shitless I, I don't know why i i just i just was I, I i would get on with him and, and i wouldn't like tell him i was scared shitless but i would be i'd be gripping on to him and i'm like man this is i don't know it just felt uncomfortable you know and uh uh you know i, I don't know what got into me to want to just ride one myself but all right well your parents have to be proud of you uh for for what you've done they're proud of me for not riding bulls yeah they <laughs> that was something they never they never really wanted me to do like of course th that's what's cool about them is they just got behind whatever you know i i said i i wanted to do and supported me with that um but it was something they they didn't really you know i mean my dad was there when when lane frost died you know um well he was at really? that rodeo yeah and so you know they see you see stuff like that happen and then you see your eight-year-old kid that wants to do the same thing it's like uh you know because there it is very dangerous i mean I, I broke bones and got you know woke up on the arena floor a couple times and get put in the really? ambulance you know and that's scary for parents they don't want to see that no so. no but they're doing it so it's okay right yeah well yeah they really couldn't say anything you know <laughs> I yeah. think it's really cool that your mom, not to be, I'm not being sexist in any way, but that, that's a, that's got to be a strong woman. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, she's, she's rowdy. And the crazy thing about that is, um, you know, she grew up in the Ozarks. She's kind of like a farm girl, wasn't a lot of rodeo or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. And, and she's, I think, started goat tying and different stuff like that when she was in her like mid 20s. And she didn't actually start. I don't think she got on her first bull until she was like thirty years old. Really which is crazy. I'm. I think. What am I? Twenty eight now. Twenty eight. I I quit riding bulls when I was like twenty. I've been on in like eight years. Wow. I can't imagine starting riding bulls right now. You know, oh God, twenty eight no. or thirty. Well, we're much too, less we're, being a woman well, doing it in the right. in the like late seventies, early eighties. You know, that's crazy. <laughs> It says that says a lot about her. About like you said, she's she's kind of a wild woman. That, that it it must take a lot of uh, yeah. It says a lot about her. So did yeah, she meet? Did your parents meet through the bull riding or rodeo? Yes. Yeah. Did they, I saw really? they met. Mm -hmm. So was your dad yeah. just a bad influence and told her she's got to get on the bulls? Well, he no. I mean, she was already <laughs> blowing and going by the time she met my dad. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, and my dad was blowing and going too. So they were like, "Well, we can just go ride bulls together." I mean, you know, get married. We're doing the same thing. So that's that's insane. So I've never met anybody that had professional bull rider parents. Not both of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I have either. You know, there, <laughs> that's there, a there cool wasn't story. Many, there's not many today either. I mean, there wasn't a lot then, and there still isn't a lot uh, today. You know, of of female bull riders right. or rust stock riders. You know, and it's such a cool thing, but you never hear anybody say, you know, so when I grow up, I'm going to be a professional bull rider. You don't hear that very often. Yeah. No, except, you know, little kids like me that are in, in the rodeo circuit, you know, you see it then. Because we, we grew up idolizing these guys. I mean, we'd be at the rodeo, we'd be at a different rodeo just about every weekend. And so we'd be hanging out behind the chutes and we would dress up and like, like we were bullfighters and paint our faces and all that. Really? And uh, like, fun. yeah, we played, we played rodeo. I mean, we, why not? We were in the middle of it, you know? And so, right. uh, you know, we would go and back then you would get, uh, you get posters, you know, all these pro, uh, you know, rust duck riders and, and, uh, and timies and stuff like that. They would have their, uh, a picture of them on a poster, you know, and right. you would, you would get those posters and have them sign it, you know? 
And uh, so I used to have a collection of those. I, I wish now, looking back, I wouldn't have got oh, rid yeah. of them. I had oh, you so got many. rid of them? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and, and like most of them were like black and white, you know. Um, even my mom had them. My mom had them. Uh, all that. So That would be super cool to have. That would be nostalgic and just I, super cool decorations for the house or the shop or whatever. I know. And all, all the yeah, all the flyers and the cool stuff we, we'd collect. But, I mean, we'd idolize those, those people and, you know, you'd have a – you'd have all those guys sign your hat and sign those posters and you know so you grew up seeing all that and you 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 wanted to be that when you grew up oh that's really cool so tell me um okay so anybody listening here colt's got a lot of crazy stuff here so let's talk music let's talk music because i i saw um hey are you still in a band yes yeah i'm in in a band what's the name of the band the name of the band is the Drop Times. Okay, so what are what is your uh, what what instrument are you in? I'm a drummer. Drummer. Yeah, yeah, I'm a drummer. That's awesome. Actually, my uh, one of my very good friends is a drummer, and you guys all kind of have the same kind of uh, <laughs> traits. I don't know that you could pick a drummer out of everybody, but they're a unique part of the band. Yeah, definitely. They're usually ugly, you know. So <laughs> that's one thing I always. You're noticed. not the front man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not the they're not always quite the handsome front man, uh, <laughs> but but yeah, it it is funny. There is a lot of uh, uh, characteristics that are. Yeah, dr- drummers have a little little bit of something special to them. That's for sure. Hold on one second, Colt. Hold on. No, that's fine. I got Go I got to yell at them. All right. So what so what is the name of your band again? The Drop Times. Okay, so what kind of music are we talking about here? We we're calling it alternative country. Okay, I'm a big yeah. country music fan, so I but I listen right. to everything from hip hop to. But if I have my choice, I'd have Eric Church on right now or something like that. I listen to everything, man. I'm I, same. I was playing in a hard rock band before, uh, oh. for three or four years, uh, while I was living in San Antonio, and that was a lot of fun. That was a good experience. Okay. Uh, get to play in all kinds of different clubs and basements and crazy places. So, it's a totally different way of life, that's for sure. Yeah, it it's cool. I mean, it it's it's fun to have too now because I'm I'm in the shop by myself a lot, and uh, you know, it's my it's just in the shop all day, all night. I mean, I sleep in my shop, <laughs> you know. Right. So actually getting out and getting to go play a gig at this point is is like kind of nice you know it helps provide some balance you know what so i dj weddings for the last 26 years and yeah so i'm like the family man here home with three kids and you know i'm not saying you know you get a little cabin fever but now doing a gig and going out and being around you know adults and regular humans and a party atmosphere definitely helps balance everything out yeah it's fun right yeah, and I'm it can on a get a totally... little depressing being being you know, it can really wear you down after a while. Yeah, the Mister Mom part. Or the, well, or well, the... yeah, I don't. Know, I can't even speak for that. I'm sure that's on a whole nother level. Uh, but even just me being here at the shop, you know, by myself all day, you know, all night, you know, waking you know, up in admire... the shop and starting again, it's like it, it gets it gets old after a bit. I admire you guys so much for that because it takes so much dedication, so much passion, so much drive to not only have a dream to follow it, but spending every waking hour doing, you know, and I'm sure at the end of a lot of days that there's not a whole lot of progress made some days either. Yeah. No, you just got to be a loser with no options. And... Yeah. Why not? <laughs> and then and, and then you, you don't have a choice. So that's me. It's like, what am I going <laughs> to? Well, I can't afford to go to college. I, I don't want to go into major debt. I don't even know what I'll, you know. <laughs> like well i guess i'll just work on bikes or cars or something you know and it beats the hell out of a bull rider (laughs) do that you know so we got we got colt wrangler the bull riding musician bike builder and then let's talk about one other thing um since so we got rock bands we got alternative country we got motorcycles let's talk about fashion all right yeah i uh, okay, so usually when I have somebody on the show, usually I know a, li- uh, you know a little bit about them, but I knew about your motorcycle work. And so after a Google search, I watched this video. Um, 
about bringing merchandise and, and designing some some clothes. Tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I had... I, it's, I don't even really know how that all got started. I mean, I've always <laughs> had a little bit of interest in it, just designing things in general. Even when yeah. I was a kid, I would I would draw designs and would like do like if it was a house or like a truck or a boat and I, I would even draw out the insides like the layout and all that just for fun um so i've always kind of had that that mind um and uh you know fashion is 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 a a, a cool thing because it's just like the bikes you, you want to stand out a little bit you don't want to look cookie cutter like everybody else so you know dressing and if anybody's is, seen you in public um they would definitely know who colt is yeah well you know so you gotta try <laughs> you loser with no options you gotta you gotta play your cards right <laughs> well we have a name for the show now loser with no options <laughs> loser with no options <laughs> i think yeah. you're downplaying yourself a little bit but yeah I, uh, so i'm looking at colt here he's got the uh, okay so you got the dreads Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, how long? Uh, how long does it take to grow something like that out? Man, it's gone by fast. I so I I I had grown out my hair, um, you know, pretty pretty long, and and you can have your head your hair dreaded in a day. You, really? I have somebody that they they sit there with a the crochet needle, and they tangle your hair together. They have a technique of of tying it together. And uh, as your hair grows out, you got to have them come back and – or you learn to do it yourself and tie in your roots again and tighten it back up. Uh, the crazy thing is is the your dreads will – the length will go really fast because all your dead hair is not falling out. It's tied together. Mm -hmm. So after a year or so of – you know having dreads I, it was already like getting really long and so i started cutting them uh and i've been cutting them uh i've already cut them about four or five times really yeah. they just get See, too that, long i love a motorcycle podcast where we're going to learn how to do dreads this is the reason i do this show by the way <laughs> yeah i think it's man, i think it's great you wouldn't believe the amount of questions i get about it and the most unbelievable thing is how many people ask to touch my hair really that's kind and, of creepy. And, yeah, and but I always let them do it, you know. <laughs> now, I always let them do it, and I, you know, and then I think like, well, I've let twenty other people touch it. Like, why am I going to reject this guy, you know? And that's the other thing. It's it's you think it would be all women, but I, I I'd say it's sixty percent men, forty percent women. That has to touch really, me. you're like a hair whore. Everybody yeah. has to come and and don't pet Colt without asking. Yeah, that's well, yeah. That's yeah. very interesting. So did you yeah. – <laughs> that's crazy. So I mean I remember having to get dreads out of like horse's mane and stuff. You know, that was like a, a chore. <laughs> it wasn't something <laughs> intentional. Uh, you would get WD-40 and spray it all in there and, and, and Different kind of time. hair conditioner. Yeah, pull them. So do you, do you get to wash out. it and everything? How do you how do, you do yeah, that? Yeah, I wash it. Um, I wash it like normal. I just – I don't wash it as often. Uh, the thing about dreads is it, it, they're like these sponges and they hold that moisture. So if you're washing your hair every other day, you're really not giving them enough time to dry out and it can actually create mold because it's oh damp God. all the time. Right. So I, I try to wash it like once or twice a week. So not near as much as, you know, not every other day. Uh, and you got to use shampoos that um, are a little bit different. That, that that don't have so much like conditioners and moisturizers and stuff in them because that just it doesn't help so you got to get kind of these dry type shampoos but then you do that and then your scalp starts getting itchy because you know so you, it's really a big pain in the butt if you're gonna do it you know it's like there's several ways to do your dreads like you can just not take care of them at all and let them knot up and get gross and never do a thing or mm -hmm. you can go and have them professionally done and you try to keep up with them keep them clean and, and maintain and then wash them but not wash them too much and <laughs> right. 
It's a big pain. It's a terrible thing. <laughs> so it's it's a that's a full time job in itself. Yeah, and you you, you know they're real loose and crazy right now because I'm too broke to go in and and have them <laughs> fixed up. I mean, and it, it's expensive. You know, I don't have to get my hair cut like every month, but shoot, every time I go in and have someone do it, it's like eighty bucks, man. Holy and cow! You're there for like an hour and a half. Yeah, it's a deal. Wow. I could see you sitting yeah. at the hair salon. That would that would be a. I think we should bring a video camera in there and do that. I, I that used would... to have a great video of of me and uh, I had a friend that she worked at this salon and it was like one of those fancier places. Uh, and uh, I went in. She was like lived down the street and I needed a haircut. I said, "Hey, can I come by and get a haircut?" She's like, "Sure, come on by." So I went over there, and I had long hair at that time without dreads. And it was her and another girl that was there, and they were like, oh, my God, we want to curl your hair. I was like, let's do it. So they <laughs> curled my hair, and I, I have big, thick, beautiful hair, all right? So <laughs> – and, and uh, it, it's, it's naturally wavy, but they put these big, beautiful curls in it, and they took a video of me, and it's the back of my head, and it's just beautiful <laughs> – they spin me around in the chair, and it's this mustache-wearing man, and <laughs> it's just a shocker. I, I, uh, find that yeah. video. I want to repost. I gotta that. find it. It's it's find funny. that. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Fantastic. But I did feel, and they spent a long time on it. They spent like an hour on it, and I did feel weird as people were walking in and out of the salon, <laughs> you know, sitting there wearing boots uh, and a mustache, but getting my my hair curled and done. Yep, that's the uh, essence of I don't give a fuck. I'm doing this. Well, I was embarrassed, so I, I obviously I guess I gave some sort of care about it. <laughs> no, but that's really super funny. Um, yeah. All right, so we 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 covered dreads. I want to go to um, I'm shifting gears again, and we're going to come back to the fashion thing. But I want to talk okay. about somebody that's really important in your life too. Um, I want to hear about Gunner. Gunner, Gunner the Gremlin. Man, he's he's right behind me actually. Really? He's chilling. Yeah. Yeah, he uh he's been a cool dog. So how I got him and my mom got him. And uh he's a mix. He's he's half French bulldog and half old English bulldog. And uh he was kind of an accident. And uh, <laughs> my mom my mom got a hold of him and uh she she had him for a while, about 8 months or so. And she came home one day um, and he had killed all of her chickens, like 20 of them. <laughs> they were all strung out in the yard. <laughs> and she's like, this guy's got to go. You know, she, she said, I beat the living crap out of him. You know, thought like it would, but no, he's still got it in him. So anyway, <laughs> I, I had first dibs, so I took him and, uh, Gunner the chicken killer. Ever since. yeah, he's, he's a chicken killing dog, man. Um, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> anyway that, so he hangs out with you all the time yeah he's been really good because i got him about the time i i uh started my shop and got my own spot and um like i said by yourself all the time and so having a dog around and having somebody to talk to you know right is <laughs> really great <laughs> so he's he's been fun um and i, I try to take him everywhere yeah, I've seen him in a lot of photos, and I also saw him in one of your little uh, promo videos for a Harley shop over there. Where you guys are giving mm -hmm. away a bike. I saw that Gunner was a you know a mainstay, good actor yes. too. Good actor. Yes, he's in he's in just about every video or every media thing I'm doing or got going on. Like and now, it's just like a thing. Like he's got to be, he's got to be in it. And it's funny because I you know I go to certain places to get materials and welding supplies and and all that. And if I don't walk in with the dog, they, they're asking, where's Gunner? Where's he at? You know? So, and, and I don't, I hardly put him on a leash. Um, so I walk in and he runs in and, and he'll run and like, he'll go to each room and say hi to everybody. You know, he's That's that awesome. kind of dog. Yeah. But he'll <laughs> That's eat great. chicken. So watch he'll, out. Yeah, as long as they're not chickens around, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So we're um so has Gunner come to the uh motorcycle shows with you too? Or is Gunner um, have to stay home? I some of them he has to stay home. I don't I don't really go to many. Um mm -hmm. 
the Hamilton show, uh, they only allow service dogs. And, nice. you know, there's a lot going on. So, uh, we, a lot. But, uh, yeah. We, my girlfriend's parents will keep them so that they, they keep them that weekend and he gets fattened up and all that nice. over there. It's like a grandchild, so, you know, just yes. coming over the house. It's treated. I love that the gunner's like a human being hanging out with you. That's, that's good. So you're yeah, going to be at, you're going to, are you going to be at Handbelt this year? I'm hoping so. I mean, I will either way, whether I have a bike there or not. So okay. I'm working on a bike right now. Um, and I just about got it to a point where I'm going to submit some photos of it. Like Good. Incom- not done, but enough to where you can tell what it's going to be. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm going to submit those here pretty soon and cross my fingers. But either way, uh, you know, I'm definitely going to go. It's really cool to have such a great show so close to where I live. Yeah, that's great. Because a yeah. lot of people like me, it's a good, you know, it's all the way across the country, really. Yes. Um, I really okay. want to go to the one show, but, man, it's like a 34-hour drive or something like that. And, it's from Chicago. It takes me four and a half hours to fly there. Wow. So that's like going to a different country, really. Actually, yeah. last time we went, we were like, "Do you, everybody got their passport? Everybody got their passport? <laughs> we're going to Portland. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm fortunate to be able to go this year, so I'm really looking forward to uh catching up with everybody there and seeing what's what's happening it's a good time a really good time you know just sparked my thing from the jesse combs interview that you did correct me if i'm wrong but that bike that was an uh that was an electric bike that you brought there yes sir um and if i remember correctly i think how you submitted it you submitted a drawing oh yeah i actually um i had told that to somebody and then because i did draw something but i didn't that's not what i submitted what i actually submitted um i had to think about it i was like did i submit a drawing (laughs) what i submitted was uh i did a mock-up with foam of that bike so i put the foam blocks on it and i shaped it how i was going to shape the metal and i sent them that those photos and uh they were still a cool way to do it yeah they were cool enough to send me an invitation which was awesome but what i before i got that invitation once I started getting the metal work done, I updated and I sent them more photos and then I got the invitation. So they didn't, you know, I didn't send them a, a you know, crappy drawing like I was 10 years old because that's how I draw. And uh, as long as you, you do know, it in crayon, you're usually accepted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. I, I, I hopefully I'm really stoked about this bike I'm doing now. So I'm, I'm hoping that I can have it there this year yeah because what we got we're almost to when we're recording this we're in february so just a couple yeah, months well months. almost to february yeah so we're, we're yeah. coming up on that fast i know no, i'd yeah. love to, i'd love to see it some of the other shows i know it's hard being in texas to to make the trip everywhere too yeah it is i went to uh the moto beach classic like two years ago i'm Huntington not familiar beach. with that where's that at hunting and bitch beach bitch i say bitch <laughs> hunting and bitch <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna say nothing, but uh, yeah, no, we'll leave no, that right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, Roland Sands puts it on, and okay. uh, that's a great bunch of, of guys. And this last year, I didn't go. They scaled it down a bit. Um, the year I went was like crazy because they had a huge concert uh, going on, and there was tons of people for just the concert, and then they. They had the flat track on the beach, so they they put down uh, they put down plywood the size of a, a small flat track, and then they hauled they put down plastic over that, and then they hauled dirt in and put dirt on top of that, and then wow. prepped it and and had a track on the actual sand. That so, is kick ass. We're talking about a lot of crazy. work to get done. Holy Dude, shit. The, the amount of work that they did a, a really amazing job and they had the show out on the sand so uh we had little platforms that we put the bikes on i had just built a bike for a guy uh in california uh in san diego so he he had the bike in the area so what i did is i i flew in and rented the truck and hauled it there and then uh took it back and and flew back so I was able to pull it off relatively inexpensive, um, and that's how I got that one done. But nice still, that, that was that was tough financially. 
Yeah, it's so expensive to go all these places, but you can't take that experience away. But yeah. oh no, it was great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm struggling even to go to any of these shows, but I I have to. I just you know, look back going, how do you make this work? Okay, we'll do this. Yeah, sometimes so. that's what you gotta do. You just grit your teeth and all right, we'll see what happens. Right. So okay, we're switching gears again. Um, okay. So to so to say. Um, so other things, fun things I find out. Tell me about chicken shit bingo. Oh, everyone asked me about that, man. Uh, well, uh, you know, <laughs> a- AMC, no, Norm no. Arena, so. The, yeah, the only reason I, I have that uh, uh, response to it is is um, I tried to talk him out of that because it's like a produ- it was a producer's idea to oh. do that. And uh, for, for Ride with Norman Reedus when they came to Texas, it was like, I think it was episode five, and I'm on the tail end of the episode. They come to my shop in, when it was in San Antonio. <laughs> And uh, they, you know, of course, you're, you're going back and forth over the telephone or emails with the producer ahead of time. And they wanted to do something fun or exciting with Norman when he came to my shop. And so I was like, let's ride mini bikes and, and build jumps and like ride through fires and stuff. Cause that's what we did on the weekends. Really? You know, we would drink beer and build bonfires and jump them and do donuts and, you know, stupid stuff like that. So I was like, all right, that'll be perfect. Let's do that. And they're like, no. <laughs> like, we don't have that kind of insurance coverage on this guy. So oh. they uh, they came up – or they had this idea of chicken chip bingo. Uh, I think there's some bar in Austin that's famous for doing it. And I've never yeah. played bingo, and I don't want to have nothing to do with chickens, man. I had to clean out the chicken coop. I had to butcher chickens growing up. I, I had chickens – roosters attack me when I was a kid. I, I hate chickens. You know? Sounds like you and you and Gunner have the same feeling about chickens. Yeah, yeah, that's why we get along so great. It's like through those match made things. in heaven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was like, man, I don't want nothing to do with chickens. Uh, but we did it, and and uh, it's funny because it was a hit. People really loved it, and that's I I get to ask that question all the time. Yeah, and, it was uh, just interesting. I was like, all right, chicken shit bingo. So I thought maybe it's something you guys did for fun, but apparently, no. apparently not. No, okay. I don't want to do. I don't want to deal with them. And and the sad part of that story is, um, I, I built the the little cage and the bingo board for it, and uh, I had a buddy of mine pick up some chickens, so he brings the chickens over and do the show, and and you know, amazing night. We had so much fun. It's like, well, I can't believe that you know this guy came over to my shop and like, you know, hung out with us, and uh, so we parted pretty hard that night, and. Uh, my buddy was like, oh, I got a place I can take the chickens. I'll come back tomorrow, and, and uh, I'll, I'll grab them from you. I was like, cool. He didn't come back that day, and uh, I had some leftover corn or something I was feeding them, and then hit them up, and, oh, I'll come tomorrow. He didn't come the next day. I was like, daggone it. What am I going to do with these chickens, you know? And I live in the middle of the city. I'm in, like, like downtown. I got a, a pretty good yard space, but I'm basically in downtown San Antonio, and uh, – it's like, Dad, gum it, man. I really got to get rid of these chickens. And uh, I went to the bar one of those nights to hang out with some friends, and I came back at like 11 o'clock at night, and there was just chickens all laid out in the yard. They're all dead, but not eaten, you know? There was like, oh. uh, I think that's a dog will do that. I think a dog will, will kill them and, and not eat them. I mean, coons will eat them or kill them and, and eat them and, and foxes and stuff like that, but uh, it's probably a dog. And I had, there was one that was like still breathing, but is dead. So I had to, you know, uh, chop his head off and, you know, end his life quick. And there was one left that was doing all right. And uh, I uh, loaded loaded him up in my lap in the van and, and, and took him somewhere. But I don't think he survived. So I, anyway, that's a sad story. I feel kind yeah. of like a jerk. I'm like, yeah. man. <laughs> all for TV, baby. Yeah. All, I wish for, we just... all for TV. Let's just ride mini bikes instead, you know. Right. See, jump, <laughs> jump and fire. Um, well, it's funny that I was going to say something about chicken shit and not being not being able to jump fire, but I won't make that joke um, <laughs> at all. <laughs> but so Norman is a pretty cool, pretty cool cat. Oh, uh, super cool! Just like you think he would be, you know. Cool. Um, How do those people find you? It was it, it linked back to Jason Paul Michaels. Uh, he did an episode where he was one of the guests and so he was riding around with with norman 
and uh, you know the producers talk to him because he's really connected in in the motorcycle world. Okay. And uh, they're looking for kind of underground shops and people that you know places and people that aren't very well known. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, stuff you you know you have a harder time finding on the internet. So uh, he threw my name out there um, for the Texas episode, and they hit me up, and it was really great. That really helped me out a lot. I bet. That was a big deal no. for me. You know, those those are the kind of things that, you know, you look through everything that you've done and all the friendships you've made. And, you know, we've had a hundred stories of uh, dumb luck, you know, just just, just stupid yeah. little choices you make in your life on, on what you do and, and where it takes you. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really, really interesting to see how, how people get to where they're at or, or how they move forward and, and, and get noticed. Yeah, the crazy thing about that is, you know, the hand, the hand-built show had come up. Um, I had finished that bike. I, I didn't know you could submit a bike into the hand-built show at that time. I thought mm-hmm. you just got sent an invitation and that was that. So uh, I finished that bike up and I was like, I'm, I'm taking it there. I'm going to put it in the parking lot and I'm going to meet people, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I was sick as a dog too. And uh, to the point where I had a friend go with me to drive. And I had the, the bike in the in the van, and I had my friend go with me and drive me there because I didn't feel good enough to really even drive. And uh, wow. I ended up meeting people. I ended up going to that after party. Uh, I met Jason Paul Michaels, and uh, I also met uh, uh, Junior Burrell, uh, Retro Moto, who mm-hmm. is the guy that ended up teaching me how to do metal shape. Um, so, I, so those were two pe- key people in in what I do now and met them uh and also the dudes from cafe racers of instagram i guess i had met them previously but they're the ones that invited me there and then cool. jason paul michaels wrote that iron and air article and then he also is the guy that got me uh on ride with norman Reedus. so that's it's just crazy yeah and i and knew it's... i had a feeling i was like i'm sick but i gotta go to this deal for whatever reason i gotta go and i went mm-hmm you know um i think there's a lot to be said about that too about yeah. you know whatever you got to do to to just to be out there and have people see and make friends and you know because that's how this whole industry seems to work just people sticking it together is. like-minded and talented and you know I, it, it's it's cool to see and that's why i enjoy this culture yeah. so much I, yeah. I think that's that's awesome so okay so we're going back to fashion so okay. what was this do you remember the store that so you guys were that was uh, uh richter goods in san richter antonio goods. that that okay. video was at yeah and he makes like custom shirts and 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 denim stuff uh you know he, he's made a lot of jeans for like spurs players and stuff because they uh so long-legged you know they can't go to the store and <laughs> true and get pants <laughs> they gotta have them made uh right so that's that's mario over there at richter goods he did did that and and he helped me get my logo so that was another guy um did it for me didn't cost me a thing and it and actually it was a a really good logo um so that's and that's that's a hard thing to do is is to get a really solid logo amen brother surprisingly hard amen Um, to that especially something (laughs) you like as well as seems attractive to everybody yeah, people overthink it too. Like design, like they put too much into it. They put too much things, mm-hmm. or they try to to make it represent something. Like, excuse me, they always want to put a motorcycle part or some, you know. And it's it's so you know easily overdone. It's hard to find that designer that knows just you know when it's just right. Right. Um, I have a really so that shitty, was great. shitty, shitty logo on my podcast thing. My little cartoon character, a guy in a cowboy hat riding a motorcycle. And anybody that knows me knows go. that I've never fucking ridden a motorcycle. So, <laughs> but but at least it represents, I guess. But I agree a hundred percent that finding something you like and that appeals is is huge. Yeah, yeah. So that that was great. Um, and we were, were collaborating at that point, and he came out with some like limited print clothing that he had made the clothing in-house um or his seamstresses did uh and then and then he uh had the logo put on those uh shirts and stuff like that and uh i had collaborated with some other people after that point 
a lot of people in the fashion world, at least my experience, of course, um, is, is not a, a broad experience, you know, but it's, uh, they're flaky. <laughs> it's like working yeah. with, you know, hot rod guys or truck shops, like people, so many people are, you know, in the automotive industry and, and a bunch of industries, I guess, everywhere, just flaky people, man. They fill you up with, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And I got backers and I got this. And, and uh, so now what I do, uh, <laughs> I, but, but Mario was great. He, he really helped me out a lot. Um, my, basically everything has been because of somebody helping me out, which has been amazing. But um, now I just use uh, this company called Printful. Mm -hmm. and the cool thing about them is um it's all online you can upload your designs uh put them on an e-commerce site when someone orders it off that e-commerce site this company printful gets the order they make it and they ship it out directly to and so, so you're it's totally printful hands order. off right yes yeah, i'm hands off and, and i don't have to have a capital because if you need to go buy a bunch of t-shirts i did it one time and it cost me like 500 something dollars to get, get these nice shirts made with like, you know, inside printed label and pockets and a print on the back and a print on the front. Next thing you know, my cost for that shirt was like $17 and it took me forever to sell them. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> you know, it's a, yeah, it's you, a whole nother thing. I, you know, we did the same thing for Rod Smith motorcycles and you know what the, we sold, uh, shit ton of them right off the bat, but I learned that, okay, so you're stuck, you sell them all and then you're stuck with all smalls or larges and people want, yeah. you know, extra larges and this and that. So it's so much easier just to drop ship stuff and, and, and just and to get it And you end up out. giving half of them away, you know, you're like, oh you, man, you let do. me give you a shirt. And, and, you know, then you're not thinking that every time you're handing over $20, which is cool if you have the money, but it's not really cool if you don't. Right, uh, and as long as they wear them, I mean, if they wear them, then you can at least justify, you know. Yeah. I used to have my own T-shirts, and people would be like, "Oh, this is great! It's my favorite sleep shirt." And I'm like, "Unless you're a whore, this is doing me no good, because <laughs> you're not advertising yeah. to anybody. You got to wear it around." Yeah. And I, I still give shirts to to folks, but um, you know, here and there. Uh, but just having that to where it's print to order is, is really nice because they're available. People want them; they can go and buy them. Um, and every once in a while I'll, I'll throw up a new design up there or, you know, some sort of alternative, you know, version of another shirt. And, right. uh, that's cool. But man, it, it gave me a whole new respect for these people that are starting these clothing companies and this and that, man, that's a full time job, you know, trying to build bikes and be in a band and do that and maintain, you know, a healthy relationship with your girlfriend and, you know, go play fetch with the dog. And next thing you it's know, a, you're like, it's a full life, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's full life. So you can bring a double X, so your Colt Wrangler shirt to me okay. in Austin. I'll be ready. You got it. You got it with big and fluffy, big and I'm fluffy. That down. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, you don't have, but I, yeah. but I will wear it proud. I'll wear it proud. Big and fluffy, big and fluffy. All right. So, all right. okay. So with all these things you've got going on, um, you know, it's uh, you're an interesting cat, man, because you got all this stuff. So. What do you have a vision of like an end game for you? Where you, I mean, you're a young man, so what do you what do you think? Where is this road leading you? Oh, that's something I've been asking myself ever since I started. You yeah. know, when I when I first started business, it was like, you know, I was I was working at jobs I didn't really care for, and I would always reach a point where I wasn't learning anymore, and you know, so just going out on my own and just you know, messing with people's bikes was like, it's the right thing to do. And it's cool, you know, and now it's, it's five years later. And, um, you know, I'm, uh, now it's like, well, you know, just playing around with bikes and making just enough to pay rent isn't gonna cut it. Like I got to branch out and, you know, I'm not like a Max Hazen. That's, that's just, you know, or, or like Craig, you know, and they're building this really amazing off the wall bikes that you can say, Hey, I want fifty seventy five thousand dollars for this thing and someone will give it to me. You know. I mean not not that it's that easy. It's not that e easy to get to sure to sell a bike for something like that. But there's a few handful of guys out there that are able to do it and I'm not that, you know. So uh 
you know, I, I, I don't know. I've been thinking about that quite a bit of how to, I would like to get to where I just do builds that are like higher budget and or something that I don't necessarily have to like make my living off of just that one mm -hmm. bike for that next, you know, four to six months or whatever. I'd like to have some sort of product or something that, that, that brings in money. And then I can not just try to do, you know, one little build after the other to pay the bills and, and spend a longer amount of time on something that has a little bit higher of a budget and, wow. and really create something unique, but I don't know how to do that yet. Right. Well, I can I can tell you, if, you know, from an outsider, you know, looking in, Colt, you got a you got a great story. You got your you got your look. You got the the personality that, with all these things coming through and making more friends, I have no doubt that if I talk to you in three four years here, that we may laugh looking back at this uh, podcast. Going, remember I'll when be I laughing said that? one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, man, I, I can't look back on any part of my life and not laugh at something. Right. It's, been, well, you it's know, all been pretty ridiculous. No, it, which is fun, you know, and being, what, I'm 47 years old now and chasing crazy dreams my entire life. And some yeah. days, uh, even with what you guys do, with what I do, sometimes tomorrow is good enough for me. Like, yeah, you just kick ass tomorrow when you wake up and get after it or finish your day off strong and you never know what happens. You just never right. know. Yeah. Never know. Yeah, and, and taking... I, I, I got to be more thankful for, you know, I get to do what I do, you know. So uh, it's easy to get in the molly grubs where you're just like, ah, I'm, you know, barely scraping by. And all I want right now is like, you know, a shower that I can walk to, you know. <laughs> like, right. and, and then you got to look in the grand scheme of things. It's like, well, you know, overall, I'm, I'm doing a lot better than a lot of other people in the world. Um, you know, so that's starters. I got my health. My family's got their health, you know, mm -hmm. so just, you know, shut up a little bit and be thankful. Uh, There's a lot to be said about that, too. Yeah, <laughs> that's that. <laughs> there that's, is. There, there is a lot to be said about that. And, you know, it's funny when because everybody gets down on what they're doing and anything. But I think those are the times that we all we all need to step back and say, I'm really freaking grateful. I may not make any money at this right now, but you're doing what you love and you're you're following, you know, a path that you want to be on yeah yeah it's huge and, and that's that's worth something i just know that like i don't um you know i i want to make sure that i'm building towards something now and i don't wait for another 10 years to be like oh you know what this ain't gonna cut it like i need to you know come up with something um right so you know I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what that is um and i i'm, I'm pretty firm on like not going into debt for anything um mm -hmm. So, you know, not having the capital or, you know, to, to, you know, dig into something or create some sort of product, you know, is, is kind of difficult. Well, I'm going to tell you right now that I have a super good feeling about you, brother. Well, thank you. I'm, I I'm appreciate gonna, it. I'm going to leave it at that because I think that I, I see good things for you, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So let's wrap this up because we we chatted a little bit before, and sometimes this is a, a difficult thing to do. But I would love for you to nominate a couple of people that you would really personally like to hear on the show to find more about them. All right. I already got people in mind. Like I said right. before, I've listened to the show quite a bit already. Which well, thank I've you really for listening. Enjoyed, I appreciate that big time. Well, it's thank so you. cool because I, I'll get to your point here in a second, but. Oh, <laughs> It's uh these are uh, like a lot of people that you're interviewing are people that I've met at shows and I really respect their work. But when you're at shows, you, you, you're usually talking in, within a group of people and you don't really get the time to be able to be like, how'd you get started? And, and, you know, how'd you learn this? And how'd you learn that? And how'd you get to where you were at, where you're at right now? And, and so this show has been really cool because I've been able to go back and, and hear these stories from these people that I respect so much. And be like oh that's what they did and that's how they got started and so it's really been cool because even though i know a lot of the people that you've interviewed i haven't actually got to learn this much about them well thank you very so, much brother that means a lot to me and keeps me keeps me going that that somebody's actually listening and, uh, and here i'll listen and to everyone yeah i got i got probably four or five i haven't listened to but i'll, I'll make sure and go back and listen to every one of them so well, thank um you. 
So I, I got I got three people that all I right. would like to nominate. All right, I am ready for you. So all these guys, uh, they uh, they're all musicians, okay. and they are all involved in the motorcycle industry somewhere somehow. Um, first one is uh, Zach Stover. Zach Stover. Yeah, and his Instagram handle is Z dot Stover, S T O B E R. Um, and so he uh, he's a drummer for uh, Shane Smith and the Saints, which is a country band, and he has a uh, motocross track in Lockhart, Texas. And uh, so when he's cool. not on the road touring, he's over there and uh, doing all that stuff at the track. And uh, he's a really fun guy. Uh, he's like a big skater, big drummer, big motocross guy. So he's he's got lots of irons in the fire. And he's a awesome. businessman too. He, he has a business on top of that, which is crazy. <laughs> busy, busy but, man. Besides the motocross track business, he has like a, a another business. So it's pretty wild. Wow. Um, next dude who you met, uh, Alec. Yes. At, uh, Revival Cycles. Yeah. I don't, I'm probably going to butcher his last name, but P Padron? Padron? Okay. I don't I know. Think you're Sorry, close. Alec. Yeah. Um, and his Instagram handle, I can't say it either. I'll spell it for you. It's yep. uh, O W L E Q. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Alec? He's a. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Super interesting. He'll be a lot of fun. Oh, dude, he's awesome. He's uh, he's hilarious and and smart and and uh, uh, talented, dude. He's he's like really nice too, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but he play, he tours a lot and in he tours in Europe all the time and. So he's and a so, musician as well. Yeah, yeah, he's like uh, uh, he's blowing and going quite often so i think he's got a pretty cool deal worked out with uh, revival cycles to where when he's in austin he's working and when he's not he's he's touring on the road and he's Kick played ass. with a bunch of different bands yeah he's a he plays several instruments but he's mainly a bass player i think cool. uh and then uh another guy a uh, local guy here uh brooks he is a drummer for i think he's currently drumming for mike ryan which is a um country band but he was previously a drummer for uh charlie robinson who's uh kind of an og og country artist oh yeah um who recently retired uh and he has a uh, a motorcycle shop hard luck motorcycles hard luck and that is yeah that's his instagram handle too nice very cool i like that you so he tours and a theme there for us too <laughs> yeah all these guys tour that's the crazy thing is like they all tour and then when they're back they're like they got loads of work to do, so I don't know how they do it. I think this is great because we have like um, guys that just have way too much shit going on. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> They're enjoying I life. I, 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 I'm trying to think like, what am I going to cut out? Because I need to get better at like one thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. You got to teeter on that because you never know. You could be a rock star next week, or you could be a you know making a hundred grand off bikes, or you know you never know where it goes. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Or I could just suck at all of them for the rest of my life, you True. know? Then you could go be and, a bull rider. Yeah, and suck at that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did I did all right. But, man, I had I, – shoot, this competition's stiff down here. Texas is like one of the – a big state for, for riding bulls, so. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. Well, I man, some I'm of the guys be... I was riding with in high school ended up uh, – like going to the NFR and, and winning the world and some stuff like that. So no shit. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That is super cool. Well, man, I'm going to be in San Antonio in a couple months. I am going to look you up. and We're going to go hang out. Let's hang out, man. That'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be Looking awesome. To it. No, that's awesome. Well, Colt, thank you so very much for being on the show. I, I I really truly appreciate it. you're a very unique individual. And like I said, mark my words, good things coming, brother. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. Well, you take care of yourself, and I'll see, if nothing else, if I don't see you in San Antonio, I'll see you in Austin. All right, man. Hit me up. All right. All right. Thanks, buddy.